car is a collection of ideas, a set of engineering theories that must be tested against reality, against fate, and against fierce competition. At the highest levels of racing, the ideas become truly radical, the theories more advanced. Words like power and grip are translated into complex mathematical equations, all to achieve a single-minded objective, winning. This season, a new race car from Acura is moving into the sport's top classification, the LMP1 category of the American Le Mans series. This is where the world's most exotic prototype sports cars test ideas so innovative they can transform not only motor racing, but the future of the automobile itself. Will its ambitious new design prove valid in one of the toughest races in the world, the 12 Hours of Sebring? Can Acura once again stun the racing world and defeat the established elite of LMP1 in its debut effort? Green flag is up. We are underway. The move out of LMP2 comes on the heels of Acura's incredible second season. After a disappointing run at Sebring, things began to fall into place for the Patron Highcroft team. The big moment came at Long Beach. When we came into Long Beach, I know for me it was just like one of those races where you've got to win this race. And as a team, I kind of felt like we were ready to win. Strategy and everything came into play. It's a, it's a very short race, and you know track position was quite important. But we decided that we would give up track position to get new tyres on, and I think that was a, a fantastic call by the team. Set it up for our first win. Brabham has now picked up the lead. You know, it was just one of those fairy tale type stories, and um, it gave us the big, big momentum, big push for the rest of the year. The highlight of the season came when they scored a stunning overall victory at Lime Rock. The check it flies. The Patron Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for the championship, and their hopes were ultimately dashed at Road Atlanta. We'd obviously had the one, two, three in Detroit. Very confident going into Road Atlanta and then disaster. You know, crashed six cars and we only had four. So. He's lost it. Scott Sharp loses it. Despite the disappointing finish at Road Atlanta, Patron Highcroft closed the season with four class wins, including their overall win at Lime Rock. An amazing showing for only their second season of competition. Things were just as exciting for the DeFerrin team. One of the highlights was definitely the first race in Salt Lake City. You know, it was my first race back in five years, and uh, we finished on the podium in our first race, and uh, that was something I was very proud of. The team was extremely competitive for the entire season, clawing their way through each and every race. After coming so close to winning a race throughout the year, you know, Laguna was going to be our last chance. I only qualified in the second row, had a good start running right behind Brabham on the uh, on the start, jumped a couple of places. with a move there early. I passed them, leading the race. We changed drivers. Simon drove the car back to the front <laughs> and then, in my mind, uh, engaged on probably on one of the most exciting battles of the year. Tony Kanan in the 26, Simon Pagino in the 66. And this is for first in class. Here's his last shot. Final turn. These guys all coming to the checkered flag. Wow, look how close that is. Having made remarkable progress in only two short years, Acura was ready for the next challenge, a move to LMP1. Moving to P1 was the next step from taking all the learnings that we'd acquired from P2 for the last two years and really moving up and competing to win at the P1 level against the likes of Audi and Peugeot. But the decision to go forward means going back to square one to build a new car from ground zero. Is Acura equal to this epic challenge? Or will their brash ambitions turn on a path that has claimed so many racing dreams? Slow it down. Find out when Project LMP1, Acura's next challenge, returns. Our unique safety edge buffing pad on any electric drill. Scratches, yellowing, and oxidation quickly disappear. Guaranteed. McGuire's Headlight Restoration Kit, the clear choice.
to go in this race. Alan Brabham gets the lead and Timo Bernard spins! Well, when I first heard that we were going to LMP1, I mean, obviously I was pretty excited because I knew we'd achieved quite a lot in P2. But, you know, to win more races, you need to be in P1. The idea of going to P1 was always in the back of our mind. But having never really done anything in the American Le Mans Series sports car racing, we wanted to make sure we under really understood what that type of racing meant. We certainly learned it in the last two years. P1 was the next logical step for us. P1 is the highest category within the sports car racing world. It's where Acura wants to be. The technology involved in racing in P1, it's at the highest level. Acura is all about being advanced, and that's where you know, we're taking this car into the P1 category to go out there and race the best. For Acura, being the best means having the best teams possible. The Highcroft team will see the return of Australian former Formula One driver David Brabham. I think the, the beginning of the season will be a challenge uh, with a new car, new concept, so much for us to learn. As we get on, the season should get better and better and we should be very strong. Brabham will again be joined by IRL and Trans Am champion Scott Sharp. You know, there's, there's huge excitement around the, the new car. Uh, you, you can just see serious potential. Also moving up from the P2 category is the Deferrin team, headed by two-time Champ Car champ and Indy 500 winner Gilles Deferrin. This is our first race in P1 as a team, and here we are going against the best teams and cars. I can't talk about enough how big a challenge <laughs> uh, that will be. Helping Deferrin face those challenges is his co-driver from 08, Frenchman Simon Paginot. I'm really looking forward to a, a huge challenge, which is going to be a, a combine of uh, speed on the streets and speed on the road track. And I'm really looking forward to a, a great, great challenge this year. Heading up the overall Acura effort is Eric Berkman, who assumed the leadership of HPD last year, despite having very little experience in the world of racing. But as their successful 08 season proved, Berkman more than rose to the challenge. And this year, he again has grand ambitions for his teams. Our goal this year is to win P1 and P2 championships, and of course here, both classes at Sebring. It's a new year with big dreams and big challenges ahead, and the sky's the limit. I think where Acura excels, to my knowledge more so than any other of our manufacturers, is in their ability to prepare away from the racetrack. I wouldn't bet against them. Winning and racing is about leveraging every opportunity. So when we approached the move from P2 to P1, what we tried to do was take a radical new approach and really do something that was out of the box. And I would have to tell you that HPD and Worth Engineering really came up with a unique design. And it's a little tough to see when you first look at the car. Coming up, Acura's top secret new strategy to topple the icons of P1 power. Next. There's never been a better time to sign up because we're waiving all setup and equipment fees. So call one 877 today and hear how good $24.99 can sound. If you were to design the perfect storm of competition, I think you have it in the form of the Mobile 112 Hours of Sebring. When you think about what the 2009 example is going to bring, you've got the two world-class, all-conquering, but yet to be truly victorious Peugeots. You have the R15 Audis, which they've been promised to have not broken cover in any form until they get unloaded here to race. And then, of course, Acura's evolution from P2 into P1. So for a sports car enthusiast at the highest level of the game, this is as deep as the pool gets. Audi is one of the biggest names in motorsport right now. And uh, to go out there 